Hey, nature photographers, I'm coming to you from my home up here in the beautiful Davis Mountains. Finally made it here for the first time since November of 2023. So it's great to be here. It's nice and peaceful outside. Uh, it was 70 some degrees yesterday. I had the doors open, the windows open. Today we're down in the 40s, so it's a little cooler. And I'm wanting to bring you a video talking about DxO Pure Raw. Now, you've heard me talking about DxO Pure Raw 3 in some of my prior videos. And fortunately, they just released DxO Pure Raw 4, which I purchased and, and I'm using. And it handles the OM1 Mark II files. So today, this video is going to walk you through the different options I choose in DxO Pure Raw 4 and why I choose those and how I use it. I'll do a couple of different images for you. You'll see some images from some of my recent trips this year. So without further ado, let's jump into DxO Pure Raw 4. Howdy from West Texas. I'm Lee Hoy, professional nature photographer, and this is my YouTube channel, Lee Hoy Photography. I'm an OM system ambassador, photography workshop instructor for wild side nature tours and precision camera and video, and contributing author for the Journal of Wildlife Photography. Okay, so we're gonna jump at, right into Lightroom, where I've already selected a few images for editing consideration. You're going to see as I walk through here, most of these images are ISO 3200 or above. And because I want to show you a couple of different aspects of how well this software works. Now, again, DxO Pure Raw 4 is designed for pre sharpening and noise reduction before you do any other editing. So, one thing you'll notice when it comes to importing into Lightroom, when you import your images into Lightroom, if you go into the develop module, I'm going to go into develop module here. You'll see if you went down, if you went down to uh, detail, okay, there would normally be a default sharp sharpening set at 40, okay. But I don't want any pre sharpening done by Lightroom. I want DxO Pure Raw 3 to handle it. So what you'll notice, I have this preset called DxO. Pure Raw 3 import. I need to update it to Pure Raw 4, but it doesn't really matter. And what that import does is every image that comes into Lightroom, I make sure that there is no editing done to my images by Lightroom. So my color profile is set to muted. That might be neutral in if you're shooting with other camera systems. I make sure sharpening is set to zero um, in the detail panel here for global sharpening, no noise reduction applied. I don't want anything done to my image by Lightroom prior to going into DxO Pure Raw 3. So let's pick our first image and I think, let me find a good high ISO image here. Um, so this here's an image from Yellowstone in Winter Workshop, a Pine Martin Yawning. Then we have, um, I think this is ISO 12.8, let's see. Yeah, ISO 12.8. Okay, I'm in Lightroom. And by the way, to see the information for your images, you're just going to press the I key. So that's a shortcut for rotating through um, the different images. And you can define what data you want to show in that information. But ISO 12.8, this is a, uh, I believe it's called a yellow top rat, a tree rat uh, from the Amazon. You can see we're starting out with a nice sharp image. Okay. You can see my exposure is pretty spot on. I'm not blowing out any highlights. There are a few pure blacks, though not many, given that I'm shooting um, on an overcast day generally with this dark cavity here. So that's not bad at all. But no blown highlights. This is a really good image to start. But if we zoom in, and I'm at 100%, you can see there's quite a bit of noise here in the dark area. Okay, So darks always tend to show more noise than the, the bright colors. So again, we see the noise here. Not a bad image to start. I could edit, and I used to edit this, you know, before DxO Pure Raw 3 and still have a very satisfactory image. Now with DxO Pure Raw 3, I get a spectacular image back, even at, regardless of my ISO. Assuming the, the criteria for high ISO images, and, and you'll hear me say this a lot of times, we're gonna expose to the right, start with a sharp image. We're not going to crop the crap out of it, okay? And that's going to give us good luck with um, a high ISO image in particular. So the first thing we're going to do 
Okay, we're going to right click on our image. And I've already installed uh, DxO Pure Raw 4, and I install it as a plug into Lightroom Photoshop, although I don't really like Photoshop, don't use it much. But so I like to go from within Lightroom into DxO Pure Raw 4 and have it bring my, my completed image back into Lightroom. You can use DxO Pure Raw 4 as a standalone software. I don't, I'm too busy to try to keep track of what images have gone through that, where they're at on my hard drive, are they in Lightroom? So I per, prefer to go from within Lightroom out into DxO Pure Raw 3, uh, I'm sorry, Pure Raw 4 and back. Okay, that's going to make life easier for me. That may or may not work best for you. So whatever workflow you decide on, no problem. All right. Now, so there's a couple of different ways to get there. You can go export, right click export. And we now have two options. We didn't have two options with DxO Pure Raw 3. There's a preview and process your image with DxO Pure Raw 4. This will give us an image of how the, the image, this gives a preview of what DxO is going to do to our image. I normally don't do that because I have an idea already. For today, I'm gonna to show you that. But there's also process instantly. So this is just gonna edit the image and pull it right back in. You're just gonna click one button, okay? You can't change your options when you do that. So that's important to note. Another way we could get to this is to go to File, okay? Plug in Extras and do a process, oh yeah, process, uh, preview and process with DxO Pure Raw 4 or process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 4. I need to go into the uh, plugin manager and remove the DxO Pure Raw 3. That's why that's still showing up in there. All right, so let's get started with this image. Again, I'm in the develop module, right click, export, preview and process with DxO Pure Raw 4. Now I have a, I bought my MacBook Pro um, I bought this late last year. It's not quite maxed out for RAM. Um, of course, it's the M2 chip. I, I didn't ma quite max it out on RAM, and I only have a two terabyte hard drive. I do wish I'd have got a slightly bigger one on that. I plan to, and the salesman kind of talked me out of it, and I shouldn't have listened to him. But you saw how fast this popped up with the preview. Depending on the age of your laptop, it may take a while. So Newer laptops are certainly going to handle this a lot better. Now, one thing is you can zoom in at one-to-one -one for this preview of how it's going to work. And I want you to notice already up here in the dark. So let me, let, me, uh, let me move my image here to include some more of this dark space. Zoom back in. Okay. I'm going to update the preview since I changed my, uh, since I changed my area of view. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, it decided to zoom even more in. Let's get back to one to one. So you can see how well this is handling the noise and it's bringing back a lot of sharpness. Wow, I don't know why it's jumping around so crazy like this, but <laughs> it is. So this is the nice thing about the preview. You can see how much it's impacting. All right, now, oh, I need to update the preview again. Okay, it's updated. Okay, one thing you can do, so over here on the right-hand side of Pure Raw 3 are your options. So you'll see up at the top, there are two options, Deep Prime and Deep Prime XD or XD2. It's just a question of how much detail do you want extracted. Deep Prime XD and XD2 extracts even more, but it requires a lot more processing power, more time. So depending on your, your laptop, you may or may not wish to do that. Now, if we want to, we can, we can do even more noise reduction or force details even more than the defaults. I generally leave these alone unless for some reason I had a unusually noisy um, image. Now you come down here to optical corrections. At, for OM system for sure, Lightroom doesn't handle OM system raw files great. I mean, frankly, um, Capture One handles them a lot better. You get a much better raw file to work with in Capture One than you do in Lightroom. However, I don't like the lack of organizational features in Capture One, okay? So I still use Lightroom for that. Plus with, with uh, DxO Pure Raw, I, I'm not worried about which one's gonna handle my raw files better because basically I'm letting DxO handle the raw file and it's gonna give me a DNG, an Adobe raw file, DNG file for 
processing in Lightroom. So that's fine. I'm not getting a JPEG. I'm not getting a TIFF or any other image like that. Now the optical corrections then, we don't want to apply those in Lightroom. I feel that the, the DxO Pure Raw lens corrections are a lot more accurate. They give you a better image. And so for that, I do my optical corrections here at the beginning rather than in Lightroom. So I'm going to have it correct any lens softness and have it do the standard amount, any vignetting, chromatic aberration, lens distortions. Um, I have all those turned on. So those are all things that would normally be done in Lightroom. I'm doing them here in DxO Pure Raw. This is a very important option here on the right. What output format? You want a DNG file so that you can continue to work with a RAW file. So ORF is the OM Systems um, RAW file. And, you know, Canon has their version, CR, or I can't remember if it's 2 or 4, whatever it is now. And then Nikon's got a RAW file format, Fuji, Panasonic, all of them will have their own RAW files. You want it to get put out a DNG so that you have more to work with. Now, in the destination folder, I want to put it in the original image folder. I don't want a subfolder in Lightroom. I have my own organization. And there's already one thing that it does that I'm not a big fan of, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. You could choose a custom folder. The problem is going to be finding that image again once it's been processed. And, and so I want it to go right back in the original folder, right next to my original RAW file. So the next panel down is called File Renaming. And I like to rename my file where it takes my original file name and simply adds the processing method at the end. So that way I know which, at a glance, I can see which processing method I used on that image. Now it's easy for me to separate these files in Lightroom. I can search on a DNG and, as opposed to a OM system raw file. And then down here, the Lightroom collection import. Um, I wish it wouldn't put it in a collection. I end up with all these stupid folders for collections. I don't like those kind of collections, but it does it. And right now there's no option to not do that. I wish they'd give me an option to not put it in a collection. But the default is, is to put it in a collection called DxO Pure Raw 4 and then a date and time. Again, DxO Pure Raw 3 if you're listening, or DxO if you're listening, please get rid of the collection option. I just want it to pop up right next to my original RAW file and that's it. I don't want it in a collection. So I'm not gonna worry about updating my preview again, but if I hit process now, and you can see here, it's pretty quick with my laptop. Again, this is a, a fairly new laptop. All right, now, it's put it back into Lightroom, but the problem is now it's shown in this collection folder, which I already stated, DxO, I don't like. So, uh, it's here's the collection folder it's in, right? March 15th, 2024. That's the date that I process it in DxO. So to put it back, to go back to the original folder, I took this picture on the 20th of February in the Amazon. So I just come up here to my, my 20th and it's gonna to go to that image. So here you see the raw file right next to the deep prime xd2.dng. So here's the name of the raw file, .orf, that's the OM system raw file. And then bam, right there's the processed one. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to compare these two images so you can really see what's been done. First, I'm going to hide the information at the top. I'm going to collapse the panels on the end by pressing the tab key. I'm going to select compare mode and I'm in the library module. Okay, so I'm going to press compare mode and now I can just zoom in. So the image on the right is the original raw file. The image on the left is the processed file. So you can see how smooth the background is right here on the left. If you look at the rat, you can see this extracted some really nice detail. You'll notice there's no noise here above the head of the rat versus over here. Okay. We come over here, you can see just more, more detail in the trunk of the tree. And let's go up to the top. Again, really see the difference in the noise. Let me let me zoom in a little further here. And again, you see how well this has been handled. Beautiful noise reduction. And again, this image is ISO 12.8. Look at that. And I'm zoomed in at 250%. I mean, nobody's viewing your image at that, right? 
So we got to keep in mind our original viewing distance. So I'm going to click done and um, I'm going to go back to my grid mode and I'm going to bring my panels back. So what I would normally do from here is go on into Lightroom and finish editing this image. But this video is not about my entire workflow. It's just about editing my images okay, in, in DxO Pure Raw 4. So again, great results, very happy with it. I mean, that's a nice image as it is. I would definitely do some work. I would bring down the highlights. I would darken this a little bit. I would uh, maybe darken the background. I don't really like this, so darkening might get rid of that. Um, I would definitely do some, some slight vignetting probably to bring more attention here. Like I said, I don't normally crop my images. I would crop this from a four-thirds resolution to a... 3-2 um, because that's my preferred aspect ratio. But other than that, so there's one image. Now let's go back to my collection I have uh, for my images to edit. We'll do one more here in DxO Pure Raw 4. Let's take another image. Mm -hmm -hmm. You know, darker images are going to show the noise. So this is ISO 3200. I like that one. Ooh, I like this one. ISO 3200. Yeah, here we go. And this is from my recent uh, OM System Only Mastering Bird and Flight Photography Workshop. I now have 2025 dates up on the Wild Side Nature Tours page. I only I limit that to three people. You can go out there on the website and take a look at that. But here's a good image. Let's see how I did exposing it. You know, nailed my exposure. No blown highlights. No pure blacks. So great image to work with. So again, we're in the Develop module. Right click export. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when we process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 4. Now it's going to use the same options I selected prior and if you're happy with those there's no need to change them so I'm just going to process instantly. What that's going to do is it's going to pull up a, a little panel, a little window. Okay so our panel popped up and now we're ready to begin processing our image. Again this is the instantly process. It's showing me my options that I've already set. Okay. So I'm happy with those. I'm going to go process now. That doesn't mean it processes the image any quicker. It just means it pulls up a simple panel where you're not really wanting to change the options. All right. So it pulled up the image in the collection. I'm going to go back to library. Okay, so now we're going to go to the original folder for this image. Again, it puts it in the collection. That's where it takes you, and I don't really like that. But So now we're going to go up to the original folder, which is this one, and there's the image. Okay, So again, I'm going to select the original RAW file. I am going to hit Tab to collapse my end panels, and then I'm going to go to Compare Mode, Okay, and we can zoom in, and you see how much detail has been extracted. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in a little more for you happy pixel peepers. Okay. And you can really see here the, the wonderful detail in the Osprey's head and the talons is, and, and the retresses. Those are the tail feathers. Okay. In the nest, even look at the detail in the Spanish moss here versus on the right. But look how nice and smooth the background is here. Really well done, DxO. Really well done. So those are two images. How about a bonus third? Let's do one. Let's do one more just to give you guys, some of y'all I know it's by repetition and looking at different images. Um, here's one from my uh, Amazonian riverboat uh, cruise. And this is a redheaded cardinal. Let's take a look at the background just in the raw file. Again, the dark areas tend to show more noise. Nice sharp image I'm starting with. And this one is ISO 10,000. So ISO 10,000, again, nice tight shot. I don't have a ton of cropping to do, okay? And we're going to go to develop module, nail the exposure, right? With live highlight alerts and live histogram, there's no reason not to nail your exposure time and time again. So no blown highlights, no pure blacks. So we're in develop module. I'm going to right-click, export, process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 4. And we're going to hit process now. And again, even with a super fast computer, you see it's taken just a little bit. All right. Now, 
let's go back to our original file to compare uh, to our original image. And that was my Amazon trip. And this image was on the 22nd. Okay, so here we are. There's the original file. Again, tab on the keyboard will hide your end panels and compare view. And we will zoom in, make pixel peepers happy here. Now again, look at the nice detail here on the bird. It got rid of noise, but brought in detail here on the secondaries, okay? Some nice detail on the perch, the bird's head. Look at the, look at the bill. Look at the dark around the eye, okay? And then our background, nice and smooth. So now I think you see and understand why I don't worry about what ISO I'm shooting at when it comes to, um, you know, photographing with my OM system cameras. And again, this works great for any camera system. You truly don't need to worry about your ISO. You know, you might, you might avoid some of the crazy high things that are out there on the experimental end or on the interpretational end of your camera. But I'm perfectly happy and I think most of y'all would be very happy to shoot at ISO 10,000 and get a good quality image like this. I mean, that's a beautiful image. Again, and, and I haven't really even edited. All I've done is apply my pre-sharpening and noise reduction to my RAW file. And by their very nature, RAW files need that. Think about it. We're representing the, a 3D world with squares. So, you know, I don't want to go too technical, but you've got to create more contrast for lines and edges and things like that, like bird feathers or foliage, you know, uh, the scales of a snake, whatever it might be. But again, I shot at ISO uh, 10,000, so I had a, a minimum shutter speed here of 1600, which in a skiff on a boat, that's about as low as I recommend. Um, and, but I'm, I'm extremely pleased with these results. I hope this video has been super helpful for you. Don't be afraid to purchase DxO Pure Raw 4. Again, I own Topaz Photo AI. Uh, I've tried Lightroom's Enhance, and none of them give me the results that I'm as happy with as DxO Pure Raw 4. And again, I don't, if you own Topaz AI, that's fine, or if you just use Lightroom's Enhance, you don't want to buy additional software. But whatever you're going to do, if you shoot at high ISO, you are going to need to apply some very specific types of pre-sharpening and noise reduction, okay? Thank you all. Be sure and check out Wildside Nature Tour's website if you'd like to go on an OM system only workshop with me. For my European fans, I have now, I'll be putting up on the website soon in April 2025 OM system only uh, workshop in Spain photographing birds and mammals. Should be a spectacular trip. I'm looking forward to that. Thanks for joining me. Thank you to those of you who've sent super thanks. The donations blow me away. I'm so appreciative. It makes the hard work doing these videos worth it. Get out and get some great shots.